Hoyl Vaur, uh, hello, uh, my name is And Andrew Reynolds. I'm a doctoral researcher at the University of Reading, and this is my presentation for TAG 43. Uh, my apologies for not uh, being able to make it up. Um, the train strikes uh, really stopped me getting to Edinburgh. Uh, the title of my presentation is New Insights into, the, into Fragmentation Within the Hordes of the Bronze Age and Iron Age Wales and the Marches. A key aspect of my Horde research project is concerned with the relationship between complete objects and broken fragmented objects. Uh, this is in line with Chapman 2000. Uh, primary premise of, of, of the project can be concisely stated as deliberate object fragmentation was commonplace in the past with widespread, widespread reuse of the ensuing fragments in an extended life after the break. It has been the contention of much research that deliberate fragmentation is, fund is a fundamental feature of not only later prehistory within Britain and Ireland, night 2017, but also the communities living in many other temporal periods and places, and this really interests me. Uh, the evidence for deliberate fragmentation is increasing each year, both at the level of intersite data and intrasite data, often through pass such as the social practice needs such so much so that the social practice needs to be investigated in line with with uh, Chapman 2000. This research paper investigates fragmentation with, within older Bronze Age and Iron Age metalwork depositions in Wales and the marches such as Pantomine, Llynvawr and Llynkerigbach. Uh, almost 200 Bronze Age and Iron Age holes have been identified in my doctoral research data set, data set Wales and, uh, and the Marches Hoard Database, WMHDB, uh, and there are the holes that I've identified. Uh, in 2000, Chapman took the debate about deposition in a new direction, outlining his concepts of fragmentation accumulation in, and enchainment in the context of southeastern European archaeology. Uh, Chapman 2000, Chap Chapman and Gay Darska 2007. He explored the idea that structured fragmentation seemed to relate to social structure and personhood. He further emphasised links to social practices, performance, art, liminal landscapes, um, ancestral space, uh, distribution patterns and beliefs. It is here that Chapman develops a fragmentation epistemology, a theory linking hordes with exchange systems in prehistory. This really interests me. Chapman goes on to note the importance of a regular set of rules uh, for multiple depositions in one place or area uh, or region. A similar suggestion to Fontaine's regional clusters uh, making a key element in the maintenance of social and cultural memory. The established fragmentation mechanism developed by, by John Chapman outlines a form of social relationship that involves a selected artefact that is deliberately broken. Uh, so important in some of the hordes in Wales and the marches. Once shared to individuals or communities, the enchained relationship is developed and the chain can be lengthened as objects are fragmented, broken further, prior to deposition as a structured selective um, process. This is, this, this is key to the enchainment and accumulation that Chapman identifies. This connects very much with Garrow and Gosden, who also highlight patterns of fragmentation in the hordes of, of the British Bronze Age. For example, the high number of sword fragments found associated to the River T Thames show that swords were made to influence violence, inflict violence, but were the victims of violence as well. So the violence done by the swords and to them was perhaps a reciprocal relationship. Uh, also, Bruck uh, suggests that broken objects can, cannot simply be seen as rubbish but played a significant and valued role in the creation and transformation of interpersonal links uh, in this temporal period. I think this is important. Chapman discusses a number of aspects of fragmentation breakage that can, that can be linked to the Bronze Age and Iron Age holds of Britain. The first 
depositional Chapman category is break breakage by an object through use. And it's undeniable that some of the, the worn out hordes uh, that, that are in my database were broken through wear. But a second reason for, for artifact breakage or deliberate fragmentation is, is the damage as part of a ritual. And, and this is also uh, a, a significant part of the database, I would suggest. A key characteristic of so-called kill deposition suggests Chapman is that all the key parts of the object are found on site. All of these theories for object fragmentation suggest a link between the product and social relations in prehistory. It is likely significant that a considerate number of the metal records in Wales show signs of deliberate fragmentation. Uh, night 2017-2019. Uh, Chapman goes on further to suggest that the deliberate pattern pattern system of damage in artefacts is a way for prehistoric communities to understand the world around them uh, to, and to have a measure of control uh, and, and reflection. He stresses the, he stresses the importance of social practices and whole deposition are key. Evidence that objects might be deliberately, deliberately damaged for recasting or reuse has also been highlighted by Rowlands and Wiseman, of course, and some of the hordes that I, I, I've investigated, such as Nanta Cavan, uh, might well be found as hordes. Knight plays a key part uh, in, in a recent understanding of this, this type of research, uh, and he's played a key role in developing wider uh, understanding of the shifting context of fragmentation. Uh, his recent work in exploring links between deliberate damage and, and historic hordes also are important. And also the idea of the time depth uh, aspect to the Bronze Age and Iron Age metalwork. I think this is all very important. So it's an exciting time to, to, to be studying in this area. Uh, my own research looks very much at um, the, the Hordes of Wales and the Marches. And, and I've also tried to develop the idea uh, alongside the theories of Kolb and David Boode in Australia that, that, um, that, that at, during this temporal period, that there was a, a reflection uh, in, the, in the hoarding practices. And you can see the reflection in, in, the, in some of the hordes that, that show emotion um, to them, uh, the performance, uh, the diversion, uh, the divergent practice rather, uh, in, is, 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 is a reflective uh, a way of dealing with some of the hordes. There's also some of the hordes illustrate an assimilation uh, where ideas are, have been adapted and tweaked and done in a particular way, a new particular way. And then there are some convergent hordes that, that show a completely different way of doing things and really do stand out. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm working on developing and de um, uh, this research further. And hopefully um, I can discuss this uh, at another time. Uh, my doctoral research into these 200 holes suggests that fragmented objects are indeed in the region of Wales and the Marches. Fragmentation is a key element uh, of the act uh, of holding. A shared practice or perhaps even a brand as Fontaine and Roymans have suggested. Some of my recent research at the National Museum in Cardiff, which I really, really enjoyed, uh, has suggested that there are some interesting examples of evidence of fragmentation in, in the older hordes, uh, some of the hordes that have been in the collections of the museums for quite a while, maybe 100 years, maybe 150, 200 years. Uh, for example, the late Bronze Age and early Iron Age Clinvaud horde uh, seems to have a few examples of possibly interesting fragmentation um, the cauldron, one of the cauldrons, and I'm looking forward to, to examining the second cauldron now uh, in the new year. Uh, one of the cauldrons uh, has uh, examples. I'm a bit of an archer myself, and my daughter was a European champion archer. And um, so I love archer, uh, archery. And there seems to be, I think it's more likely a spearhead, a spearhead damage in, in the cauldron. Uh, but you can see on two of the slides there, that there's definitely something going on. Um, and there are at least uh, eight to ten 
uh, of these marks in the cauldron that, that would have sunk it into the into the lake and also I'm interested in the chisel marks that uh, um, I noticed in one of the sampling axes the sampling axes in Clinvaud tend to be almost perfect uh, very little wear but this one in particular um, seems to have been targeted for a particular reason um, so I'd like to research this one further but this is the sort of work that, that I'm hopefully going to do a little bit more in my PhD. Uh, some of the other examples uh, that I'd like to just highlight today in my short presentation uh, are, are first of all the pantomime hoard which came from uh, the Cardiganshire, Carmarthenshire area. Um, uh, another old hoard of 25 plus objects, late Bronze Age. Um, and my figure with the slide there, you can just about see. Hopefully, there, there's the hoard. But also, the, there's an example of, of a piece of metalwork, possibly a gouge, that has been forced into one of the spearheads. The top spearhead, uh, top of three, a third one from the top, I think. Um, which is an interesting, and that hasn't been reported on previously. So I'm looking forward to going back to Carmarthenshire Museum um, again in the new year to have a little look at that. Uh, and that's an interesting example of, of deliberate damage, I think, and something going on perhaps. Um, the lower lug uh, X-ray comes from, the, pa from the, the, the past records, and that shows an example of a late Bronze Age uh, sword being forced into an axe axe head um, into the bank of the river at uh, in Lower Lug in Hereford, the Lug River. Uh, very interesting uh, divergent practice, I would suggest. So that, that's something uh, I'd like to look at a bit more. But that has been highlighted in the database. And also then uh, you've got uh, the, the Hellsby um, Axe said there that that has a gouge again forced inside it uh, deliberately for a particular reason um, in the hill fort found in the hill fort uh, in the last century uh, early last century in uh, Cheshire um, at Helsby and, and that's an interesting uh, element to the hoard and then the, the final one that I've highlighted there comes from Broxton, not too far from Helsby, another hill fort on, on the, uh, looking down on the Cheshire Plain. Um, a persistent place, a, a liminal landscape, I would suggest. And Broxton shows, this Broxton uh, palestive shows chisel cuts that again haven't really been reported. Uh, it looks like chisel cuts anyway. Um, and that's something that uh, is interesting and I'd like to develop and, and look at further if possible. Uh, there are many of these examples, but in my short presentation, I just chose to, to highlight these. So, uh, however, the high number of regional slight differences or nuances within the deliberately broken artifacts seem to suggest that you know there are clusters and patterns of um, activity it says sort of shared practice done locally a recipe for hoarding that has a particular local uh, aspect to it uh, in the Vale of Glamorgan there's a cluster of socketed axes that, that, that have been deposited in particular patterns and some of them show fragmentation and within the, within the Vale of Cloyd you get the gold hoards uh, such as Rosset, uh, which are bronze and gold, where the gold has been um, uh, forced and, and put into side, inside, inside the axis, which is an interesting aspect to it. Um, there, there's a, the patterns that seem to, to come out of, of, the, of, of the wheels and the marches seems to be like a repetitive, reflective action, a selective pattern of, pattern of whole deposition, I've put it. Um, and, and you can see that there. Um, and then in conclusion, in line with some of the ideas of Chapman, my doctoral research seems to suggest the practice of object fragmentation was commonplace and embedded in the hordes of Bronze Age and Iron Age wheels and the marches. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to developing it uh, further and hopefully uh, increasing my understanding of what uh, was going on 
during this temporal period. Um, it's a very, I'm really enjoying my uh, research. So thank you very much, uh, Hoyle Vaur. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not with you, um, but hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll be with you next year.